Hey guys, how you doing? It's TJ here, and in this video, I'm going to be walking you through what to expect on your first day as a software engineer. Before I start, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Most of the people watching my channel are not subscribed, and that impacts the performance of the channel, so please help me to help you by subscribing to the channel. So now, what to expect on your first day as a software engineer? So when you accept your uh, job offer as a software engineer, you are going to be given a start date and also told who your manager is as well. So that when you get to, to the office on your first day, your uh, manager should actually be waiting by HR to welcome you into the company. If it's not your manager that you meet, it'll typically be somebody else on the team that is waiting for you or just the HR person that escorts you to your desk. Now, once you get to your desk, that's where your, your laptop and, you know, all of your setup is going to be at, as well as all of your other co-workers. Uh, so, this is really just you kind of doing a bunch of introductions, especially if you haven't met all of the engineering team during the technical interview process. So, after meeting your team, you will most likely go into your first daily meeting, which is called stand-up. Now, stand-up is part of the Scrum methodologies uh, because stand-up is a 10 to 15 minute meeting that you have almost every day where it's like a status update for each member of the tech team. So in this meeting, everybody goes around and says what they worked on yesterday, what they plan on working on today, and if they have any blockers or questions or just things in general that they need help with. When it comes around to your turn, you would just kind of give another brief introduction or somebody might just introduce you anyways. So that's it for that meeting. After that meeting, you will most likely have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with your manager where they tell you more about the company's roadmap and also just kind of talk more about what the tech team is currently working on and where you fit in the grand scheme of things. And then after that, you guys will probably go to a team lunch where you get to meet or I guess interact with your teammates a lot more. Now, after lunch, this is when you will likely have an HR meeting. Um, so make sure that you drink coffee so that you don't fall asleep in that meeting like I do. Uh, but in this meeting, this is where HR would just kind of typically be uh, getting some documents from you like your driver's license information and a sample check with your routing number and account number there so they can set up automatic deposit for you. And they'll also be telling you a lot more about the company's policies, et cetera, all of the kind of normal, boring stuff that you would do for any job in general. Now, after HR, this is, this is kind of when you kind of really start working on your role because the next step is for you to get your laptop set up. And by set up, you will get your email set up, you will get your Slack set up, and Slack, if you've, if you've never used Slack, Slack is the platform that most tech companies, and really Slack is kind of now the most dominant platform that a lot of companies use to communicate when it comes to employees internally. So Slack is just kind of like a chat app that you guys use with your teammates. So after you get your email set up and your Slack set up, you will also be added as a member to the company's GitHub account. Now, if you are not familiar with GitHub, GitHub is where all of the company's code is typically stored online. So once you are added as a member, you will not have access to all of the different um, applications that the company works on. And in terms of you setting up your computer, you will not be able to download all of the applications that you need to focus on when it comes to your actual role at that company. So once you now have all of the applications downloaded, it is your goal to get those applications running on your laptop, which is kind of typically a bumpy part for everybody, not just junior developers, but even seniors as well. So this is a process where you would definitely want to ask for help if you get stuck. But before you ask for help, most of the company's applications come with a README, which are just step-by-step -step instructions of how to set up the application and get it running on your, on your laptop. The problem with the README at times is that those documents may tend to be outdated every now and then if a bunch of rapid changes have happened in, in the code base, 
which is why you will typically find yourself asking for help from one of your coworkers. So don't feel shy to ask for help. Don't feel like you have to have everything set up on your own. Like nobody expects that. Most of your coworkers needed help when they were setting up their own laptop as well. Okay. So now after you have all of the main applications set up on your laptop that you need to work on, uh, somebody on the team will typically give you a walkthrough of the main applications that you need to focus on. The goal in this walkthrough is to kind of introduce you to the code base and to explain to you how the, the code is organized and just, and just kind of tell you about the team's preferences in terms of how the team does things in terms of merging code, etc. So once you now finish that, the main thing that you might want to think about is getting acclimated to the code base or just kind of learning more about the code base on your own. So the main ways that you can do that is by looking at the recent code that was merged into the code base. So these are called commits and this is all information that you can find on GitHub on the actual app folder that you're in which is called a repository. So you can pretty much look through all of the commits and commits are anytime that you that you merge your own code into the company's code, you always have to write what's called a commit message. And that commit message simply describes the changes that you made. So on GitHub, you can actually go back and look through all of the old commit messages of the code that was merged in and click on each one. And it'll actually show you what the old code base used to look like before that commit and then show you what the actual changes were that were made afterwards. So this way you can kind of start slowly learning what changes the company has been working on the past few days or weeks based on how, based on how far back you go. And that'll kind of slowly start teaching you a bit more about the code base. Um, another way to learn about the code base is by reading the, the specs or the tests. So most production level applications have tests that you write along with the code to make sure that things don't suddenly start blowing up in production. So what you can do is to just go into the test folder and start looking at all of the tests for the main areas of the application that you have to focus on. This will kind of help to, to start introducing you to the business use case or the business logic that the company is working with and just kind of start teaching you more about the about the company, about the software, and you can actually use the, the specs to just learn more about the code base overall. Now, on your first day, if you get lucky, you might also be assigned a task or a ticket for you to work on as well. So don't feel like you have to have this on day one. And if you don't get assigned a task on day one, do not consider that a fail. Like that's just on the company. Um, most people are not really assigned tasks on day one, but if you do get one on day one, if you don't get it, you will typically get assigned a task on day two. And the task that they'll assign to you is typically like a small task, either 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 like a simple bug fix or a feature that they need, but the feature isn't really that important and urgent. Um, kind of like busy work in a sense, but it's still something that once you finish it, will actually go to production and users will start using it. So the goal of this task is to slowly onboard you into the company and the code base and to start getting you familiar with the code. Now, most of you might be kind of scared and concerned that, oh crap, what if I write bad code and it gets into production, blah, blah, blah. No, that's not gonna happen because almost all of the code that you write based on the team most teams have a two person approval process, meaning every time that you write code and you want to merge that code into production, two people on your team have to actually review the code that you wrote and approve it before it can be merged. Not just that, the code that you write typically has to be accompanied by tests that you write, meaning that you have to write test cases testing the actual logic that you just wrote to make sure everything works properly. On top of that, most teams also have a QA team or a team that does all of the testing of the software that the engineers are building. So even 
after your code is merged or before it's merged, depending on the company, a QA engineer will actually go through and test your code to make sure it's working correctly before that code is deployed. If after all of that, an error still reaches production and users, don't feel too bad or feel like it's on you per se. Um, this is a team effort, like writing code is a team effort, or I guess I should say deploying code is a team effort, right? So every code that you write and deploy has to go through a process. So if the code you wrote goes through that whole process and an error still makes it to production, the whole team is responsible, not you. So don't see that as like a personal failure, like, oh, I'm a bad engineer, blah, blah, blah. No, like nobody's thinking like that. Everybody's just focused on making sure that things are working because bugs or errors are a part of the software development life cycle. So don't be, don't be too stressed about that on your first day. Also, don't be too stressed if you don't get that task done on your first day or your second day. Like, it is not a rush. The goal is for you to start learning more about the code base. Also, something that I don't think I touched on when I was talking about stand-up is that uh, most teams work in a two-week cycle, which, which are called sprints. So, a sprint lasts about two weeks, meaning that at the start of the sprint, each member of the engineering team is assigned a certain number of tasks or tickets that they have to work on during those two weeks. For you on your first day, you will likely be assigned maybe like one or two tasks, or but definitely no more than half capacity compared to all of the other engineers because they are a lot more familiar with the code base. And if you ever don't get your work done within those two weeks, don't be too stressed about that. Um, your work would just be pushed into the next sprint. But do your best to get things done in that sprint. Um, if you can't, speak up loud and early to let people know that you need help or that you might not be able to kind of get things done in the time that was allotted. Now, that is really it for day one. When it comes to day two, uh, you will come to work and just kind of finish wrapping up any last minute HR stuff that you have to do. But after that, you are just focused on working on, on the tasks that they assign you and going to all of the normal meetings that all of the other engineers on your team go to. That's it. So welcome to your new career as a software engineer. If you have any questions below about the process, let me know. And I do my best to respond to everybody in the comments. Um, I might not respond the day of, but I definitely do my best to return within a week most. You know, so if you have any questions, interact with me in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you in a timely manner. And again, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I have a lot of stories to share with you guys and I'm really excited.